Are you, are, is your volume up, Cora? Yeah. Can everyone, can everyone hear her at the back? Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for having us tonight. Uh, this talk, as you've seen a couple of times, is titled Programming in the Small, uh, Kids, Chickens, and Ruby. I'm Jason Clark, and uh, we're reading Coraline Clark. Coraline Clark, excellent. So uh, as Lauren alluded to, I guess it was 2014, uh, a couple of years ago, Cora and I gave a presentation at Cascadia Ruby, actually here in Portland. And what was that presentation about? What sort of stuff were we doing back then? Well, programming with Packing Pack. That's right. So we were doing some desktop programs. What, what was your favorite one of those that we did? What was the one I that you showed? I had a couple favorites, but the one that we showed was the Star Wars program. That's right. So With Yoda, Princess Leia, and Darth Vader. Yep. <laughs> I, I got to admit, it was probably better than most of the programs I've written in my professional career. So, <laughs> it, it was pretty fun. It's so, the hardest one. Yeah, that definitely was the most work that we did. All right, so, you know, in the intervening time, we have continued to program. We've written some other things with Hack and Hack. I mean, we, we like Ruby a lot around our house. How much do we like Ruby? <laughs> like, how much do we like Ruby, Cora? A lot. A lot. <laughs> so who's this on screen? Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> we like Ruby so much, we named our family guinea pig Ruby. <laughs> so that gives you some idea of where we're coming from. But, um, you know, it's fun to write games, it's fun to write little drawings, but, you know, we wanted, we wanted to do something a little more advanced. We needed a real world problem for us to solve. So what was the problem that we came up with, Cora? Well, our chickens weren't laying for a couple days, Make a camera to spy on the chicken. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, this may seem like kind of a silly thing to do a little bit, but that's until you realize that, like, we have 11 chickens. So, the problem of knowing which chickens are laying eggs and which aren't is actually, like, kind of a problem for us. So, because we have three identical ones. Yep, we have three identical ones. Wow. And just, just for the record, if, uh, if the city of Portland asks that 11 is in binary, uh, <laughs> so the number of chickens that we have, so just, that might not be totally clear. Uh, all right, so you alluded to what our solution is. What, what were we gonna build to fix this problem for us? A camera. A camera, that's right. So, there's a lot of things that we learned as we did this project. Um, and the first one that I would like to highlight is uh, when you're working with kids and when you're trying to do something like this, it's really important how you chunk the work up. Um, recognizing that like how long I can sit at the computer or how long I can fiddle with something and pay attention to it is very different from how long Coraline wants to do those same things. And as the adult, if you're helping uh, a young person do some sort of programming exercise, it's important to know like what size of chunk of time are they ready to spend? How long can they pay attention? So for us, a lot of the time we needed to make things eh, maybe 15 minutes to a half hour before we did something different. Um, otherwise, it was hard to, hard to keep paying attention, right? All right. But I'm not the only one with tips, right? This is, you know, you were equal party in this. So what's your first tip, Cora? What do you think? Time to spend time with Dad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's right. It is really a great way to connect uh, with the young people of your life to build something together. All right. So hardware. What What is hardware, Cora? We talked about this earlier. You forgot. Okay. So her first answer was, well, that's the stuff you get at Home Depot, right? <laughs> it was like, like so many things in tech, you are correct, but also not quite. So the hardware is the physical part of the computer, right? So what, what is this up on screen? What the Raspberry Pi. That's right. So when we, when we first started talking about this project, as we were driving around town, um, I also have a son uh, named Asher who's about five. And he was sitting in the back, and he was getting really excited about this project. Why, why did he get so excited? Because he thought we were having dessert in the middle of the day. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> the raspberry pie. He was like, what? 
Raspberry Pi, this sounds great. And all the rest of us knew that this wasn't quite what was going on. But, um, so this, this brings me to my next tip, um, which is that with these sort of projects, it might make sense as well for you as the adult to try some things ahead yourself. So like I said about the chunking, like you've got a certain amount of time and attention. You don't want to take all the variables out, but making sure that you're not just going to hit a brick wall and spend the next 30 minutes trying to stare at a web page to get something to work uh, <laughs> can be a good plan. So with some of the hardware, I hadn't done some of these things before. So I assembled a few bits and made sure that it was going to go pretty smooth and that we'd be able to get something working. And then, you know, took it back so that we could put it together together. All right, what's next, Laura? So what do we got on screen here? Me and the Raspberry Pi. That's and the camera. Right. Yeah, so does, it, does the Raspberry Pi come with a camera to begin with? No, you no? need to buy one online. That's right, you buy one online and you plug it in separately. And it's really delicate. It is very delicate. You can see that like cord that it's hanging on by. Uh, I was very worried that we were going to have something happen before we could get through to the next stage of the project. Yeah, but, you need to buy a Wi-Fi cord. That's right. We also bought a Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, fortunately, our chicken coop is probably in a better spot for reception than a lot of parts of our house because of where <laughs> our cable modem happens to sit. Yes, you can go to the next one. All right. So this was the next step of the project. So we have that camera. What's What are we looking at here? What's that? A hole. That's right. So that we did on purpose. That's right. We made a hole through the plastic case because you know it's an organ. To put the um, little thing of the camera in, and then we screwed a screw in so it stays there. Yep. That's right. So everything. And it looks down at our chicken. Yep. So the chickens are kind of like like you are in that picture. That's where the chickens are going to be. Right? They're, they're yeah. down below the camera. Uh, so, you know, this was not a super sophisticated setup, as you can well <laughs> tell. I mean, you may be able to glean where we got the box from. Uh, <laughs> but it works. It, it fit the bill, and it was really simple for us to work with. Head to the next one. So here's the top view. Like you said, we got the screws going there. We put the thing onto a couple of uh, boards, and we drilled it down to it. And the boards, what did we hook the boards into the thing with? What did we put on, on the bottom? Duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Raising them right. <laughs> cool. So. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you did that one? I thought it was a chicken project. We did duct tape. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> I that was chicken <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we know what hardware is. What is software? Do you remember what software is? Oh, you've written quite a bit of it. So software is the instructions we give the computer, right? So we have a couple of computers that are playing around here. We've got to tell the Pi what to do. Yeah? But I don't know about you, I, I look at that little like chipboard, like where's the screen? So we plugged it into the TV and a mouse and a keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, the Raspberry Pi just has an HDMI port on it. So we just unplugged our Roku and plugged it into the Raspberry Pi. Why didn't we bring it? Well, actually, because it's sitting in the chicken coop taking pictures right now. <laughs> in the dark. And the sensor doesn't really pick them up this time of day, so it's just black. But it's still <laughs> taking <laughs> pictures. It's working. All right, so when we're programming on the Raspberry Pi, yes, the first thing that we introduced was the terminal. So what's your favorite command in the terminal? LS. LS. <laughs> and what does LS do for us? It shows us the files of the pictures. That is right. So here we can and see some of the JPEGs we got. And what's what's that? Hi time. What did we put in there? All the chicken pictures. Yep. That's right. And one of the other files in PyTime is called chicken spy. That's right. <laughs> Chickenspies.rb was the Ruby script that we used to draw. <laughs> 
Chowder. Chowder. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this brings me to my next tip. The terminal is actually pretty cool for kids to get into. Like it's cryptic. There's a lot of things that are not great about it, but it's a great sense of power to be able to type a couple of characters and see the computer do something. Like, you don't have to insulate kids entirely from the real tools that we use day to day. You know, it's great to have things like Scratch that are built out for kids specifically, but you know, you can give them some, uh, some real stuff that we use as programmers as well. Now we have a core tip. What's your tip? Be careful not to put the wrong thing in. <laughs> <laughs> Computers are really picky, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Like, you get one letter wrong and it just will not work. Yeah. Yep. All right, so here's the next big terminal command that we ran into when we were working that on the file. how you make a file. That's right, so what, and what's in that file? Pictures. Pictures. So with Raspberry Pi, when you install the camera, it has this Raspi still, you run that, give it minus O, and it takes a picture. As simple as that. Yep. And this is one of the things that I loved about uh, this bit of the project, was how quickly you could get results. And that's critical when you're working with kids. We were able to sit down with the Raspberry Pi, boot it up, type LS, look at a couple of things, and then type that Raspi still command, and there's a picture there that we can look at. It didn't work, so we had to. Uh, Do you remember what was wrong? What was wrong with it? So it took pictures, but they weren't quite what we expected. They were upside down. That's right. They were flipped upside down. And do you remember how we fixed that? It's been a long time. BP. Yeah. So there was a command line option that we could that pass to the thing. That stands for vertical flip. Vertical flip. Yep. So. As you can see, like having these options can be really exciting for a kid to dig into and explore and learn how something works and how it reacts. All right, but you know, a little shell scripting takes you a ways. This is a Ruby meetup, so you know, I wanted to drive it with a little bit more Ruby. Um, and this is the the chickenspies.rb. We can see up there at the top, right? And what's what's that first line about, or what's that do? Makes pictures go over and over and over again. And you put uh, the time how long you want it to do in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's down. What's, so the, what's the command there? Sleep. So we tell the computer to sleep, and it so takes a picture every once So we did it two minutes. Yep. And it turns out... seconds. Well, so part of the work that it does in the middle is that it uploads the picture, right? Remember, we copy it off of the computer. And this is where you do run into some limitations with the Raspberry Pi. It takes quite a while for it to upload those pictures. Like, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds for our Pi to shuttle a one meg image up to S3. <laughs> so, you know, we're not going to be running any real-time video anytime soon off of this. Um, Alluding to the real tools thing, yes. Um, we also upgraded from Hackity Hack to using an editor called Atom. And one of your favorite things about it was that we were able to apply a fun theme to it. And this one came from uh, Amy Wobolo, uh, Sailor HG on Twitter. And so we'll make sure that she sees this at some point along the way. I, I will let her know. <laughs> Excellent. So, Gad tip. Ask permission to test. <laughs> I didn't show you which one. This one? This one? I, I'm pretty sure we went through this. Do you like this slide, though? It's a good thing to let the kid drive. And you know what? You can wait a little while for them to type something. It's OK. <laughs> <laughs> you can be patient. <laughs> it's really hard. I'm not going to deny it. But it gives a real sense of empowerment to the young person that you're working with when they're the one using the keyboard. They're the one making the stuff do what it needs to do. All right, so software. We talked about what software is. What's the other piece of software that we're dealing with here? Shoes. Shoes. 
So Shoes <laughs> is a GUI desktop uh, library that's available in the Ruby. Um, I'm one of the maintainers, although I haven't worked on it in a long time. That's going to change soon. What do you want to say? Yes, you can. So when we did the Stoops <laughs> program on Hacky Hack, we used Shoes to color it. That's right. <laughs> I don't think that we have that one on this computer, but we can try to make sure that we do for a later time when we do it, okay? I'm pretty sure we don't have it, but we got some other stuff to demo, right? We got some other stuff to show. Okay, so here's a photo of you programming on that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Draw it on paper first. Is this something that we do when we're, when we're programming a lot? Yeah. We draw the plans first before we do them. Yeah. And I feel like this is a, a key thing as well when you're, you're programming with young people is that one of the big takeaways that they can have is how to plan things, how to break a problem down, how to think about what they want to accomplish. It's not just mashing keys and making things happen there. It's about how you think about stuff, right? What's, what, a, what is your tip about, about writing a shoes app? Well, I like Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's this is one of, thing. It's one of the things that I like the most about using something like shoes, where there's a very quick turnaround between the code and what they see on screen, is that it lets them make a change and then see what that change to the text did. I'll also say, uh, don't get too hung up on doing things right. As a software engineer, I looked at this and my first thought was, oh, so I'll need to get the AWS libraries onto the Pi so that we can you know, get that gym and integrate it and do some error handling. I need to say a little bit more about this one, okay? <laughs> and I really was like, that was my mindset when I started. And then I went, you know what? She's not going to enjoy sitting through that. And I can just back tick the terminal commands from Ruby, and it'll work. It'll be fine. And we'll get pictures of our chickens on the internet. Like, you don't need to do things right to have fun. All right, so this is our basic shoes app. I like experimenting with the size. Yep, the width and the height there that we pass in. So what, what did we do there on line two? What day? Yeah, so that asks what day we want to show things for. And then we make a list of the pictures. And then what are we going to be doing with this, that list? Okay. Well, maybe we can just demo it. How does that sound? Is it demo time? All right, let's switch over to our terminal. Okay, so do you remember how we start our program? We haven't practiced this one as much, so it's okay if you need some help. Oh, yeah, that's close. We want to do that once it's started, though. How do we need to remember how to start it? Okay, so we type shoes, because it's a shoes program. So it is 2016-10-25. Cool. Okay. All right. Yay! <laughs> so there's a good reason that we did the 25th. With the weather change and the light getting less, our chickens have started not hardly laying eggs at all. So this is like one of two times that I've actually caught them since we did this project. Cora <laughs> <laughs> was like, why didn't we do the one from today? And I'm like, you'd just be staring at sawdust all day. Like, <laughs> those chickens. But, uh, yeah. Cool. All right, should we switch back? Yes. Wait until it gets oh, that's right. dark it gets and dark. the chickens. And the 
chickens come in. That's them coming in for the night. But you already <laughs> took the egg. That's right. Somewhere in there, Dad poached the egg. I'm waiting for the one that catches you like in the act. You and you both. You and you both. You need to stand there for like two minutes just to make sure. Yeah, I, I need to. I need to do that. All right. So future. The future. So we've got lots of plans, lots of things that we can do with this, lots of places to go, both on the shoes side and on the Raspberry Pi side. Yep, hit it. So one of the first things in the shoes app, it was kind of hard typing that date, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It would be real nice if we could get a better list. And you could just click on what day you wanted to see. That would be pretty good. All right, what else? Faster pictures. That's right. It takes a long time for the Pi to take that picture, doesn't it? And we, maybe our resolution is too high. I don't know. We could play with it and see if we could speed that up. That would be pretty great. And maybe it'll help you with this. Woohoo! <laughs> OCR? What's, what's OCR? Do you remember? What's that? Off the <laughs> <laughs> So it would be really neat if we could tell which chicken it was without us even having to, like, you know, stare at the picture. That would be pretty rad, wouldn't it? It would be nice if the computer did the work for us. Motion detection? only take pictures when the chickens are actually up in there. I mean, I know I love staring at pictures of sawdust, don't you? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting to stare at hours, hours and hours of that. All right, and then what's, oh, door open, close. Yes, as the light changes, it would be calm. It's, it would be awesome, because the chickens all come inside when it's dark, so if we could detect, you know, maybe we wouldn't have to go in and out all the time. Up for one second. Let's talk. Do you know what this? Do you know what this light is? Do you think it's this? Yeah, I didn't think so either. These are websites that people can visit to find out things about how we did our stuff. So, like our slides are up there, and that's the Raspberry Pi site, which has a ton of good resources, fun videos, great tutorials, tons of pictures. Like, they really make this stuff easy as falling off a log. It's it's super great. And then our code is posted up on GitHub. Uh, Jason R. Clark, Programming in the Small. People ask me if Cora had her own GitHub account. And you're too young. So their terms say you're supposed to be 13. And I knew I was going to be giving this at RubyConf. And there'd probably be a bunch of GitHub people in the room. I felt slightly <laughs> awkward about violating the terms of service quite that blatantly. <laughs> 11 chickens. <laughs> Whatever, but you know, it's, it's, it's a little rough. It's pretty impressive. All right, so did we have anything else you wanted to say? No? Well, I think.